Why should every roofing contractor in Texas be a member of an organization like RCAT? At the risk of answering a question with a question, why not? Um, I, I, and this is, I talk to, as serving on the public relations and marketing committee for the organization, I talk to contractors all the time about, you know, entrance in, what does it require? Um, and the, the buy-in to become a member of RCAT, uh, both in time investment and, and financial obligation is so low that I mean, the, the bar is so low, like you should you, you should want to do it. I mean, all these CE credits that are required to maintain the license are things you should be doing anyways. You should be perfecting your craft. You should be knowing all the little nuances uh, of how a build properly goes um, so that you can deliver that to the to the end consumer. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm. So you've mentioned a license uh -huh. and, and uh, as we've informed consumers and it's all over our website and it's everywhere. In the state of Texas, the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation or the Texas legislature does not oversee uh, registration or licensure right. for roofers in the state of Texas. So RCAT, uh, revamped a certification program that's been around since the early 90s and uh, we call this a license um, it is actually recognized by the state but it is not managed by the state of texas it is completely voluntary but it is a program that we take very seriously and we tailored around how tdlr themselves would set up the program if they did own and manage it so you have to pass an exam. Mm -hmm. You have to maintain continuing education it's a three -part hours. Exam, isn't it? It's a three-part three exam. exam. Yeah. yeah. So do, you can have remember, a residential yeah. license or a commercial license. Or you can have both. Um, so you have to pass a business and safety examination. You have to pass a residential exam and a commercial exam, and they're not easy. Plus, you have to have uh, continuing education every year. You're required to carry insurance. Uh, you're, you're required to actually name RCAT as a certificate holder on your insurance, and this is to ensure the public's confidence in who you're hiring. These people have gone out and gone above and beyond what they have to do to give you, the homeowner, an extra layer of protection and assurance that, yeah. they, that they are getting somebody who's going to take very good care of them. So Mike, you're a participant in the program uh, mm -hmm. and have been for a few years. Um, how has it impacted your business um, as, to say that you are licensed? Uh, tell me, how do you feel this really sets you apart out there in a sea of by Ten, a thousand yes. roofers, right? <laughs> a lot of roofers. So to, to that question, um, it, it has definitely helped me 100% in, in setting myself apart. And and when I'm talking to, uh, you know, whether it be homeowners or other contractors, you know, the fact that the RCAT license is a voluntary license to me speaks more than if it was a mandatory one. Because if it's voluntary, it means that the people that are bringing that license to you, to the kitchen table and saying, hey, this is why, this is in part why you should trust me with, with the care of your home. If it was a mandatory deal, then everybody would do whatever they could, scratch, claw and grab to, to get there. Uh, whereas if it's voluntary, those people are there because they want to be there, because they want to be on the leading edge of positive change. And if the state level is not going to do it, well, then RCAT's here to do it. Yes, sir. Yes, um, absolutely. That's 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 a great point. Well, thank you again um, for your input and being here with us today. We really appreciate your well, time and your contribution, uh, you know, to the roofing industry in Texas. Awesome.